Welcome to Keep Common Craft On. I'm Stephanie with IOIB Designs. Have you ever had an issue with slotted designs where the pieces don't snap in snugly like they're supposed to? Well, today I'm gonna to explain to you why you're having that problem. It's called Kerf. If you've never heard of Kerf, you'll definitely find this video helpful. So let's get right into it. So there's just no way to avoid it. You are gonna to have to do a little bit of math to make this work out. Anytime you're working with something that has slots like this and you're trying to fit a piece into the slot, I have learned a valuable lesson this week with several different things I've been making with slots. And you just have to adjust the slot for your machine. There's just really no way around it. So I, I didn't do this first. Um, I went ahead and cut out of scraps the parts that I thought I was going to use. And when I went to put my hooks into the slots, they don't fit. Because another valuable lesson I learned this week is that even though this is all eighth inch birch plywood, it is not all created equally. I will show you for sure with my calipers. Let me just show you that this piece here, when I measure it, is saying uh, 0.137. And this piece here, is well that that's the one that's the same it's this one over here this one here is 0.18 or 0.1185 so that is a pretty big difference so when you're trying to um, fit something in a slot if you're using a piece of plywood that's a little bit thicker um, then it doesn't work so i couldn't get these to fit in the slot so i'm having to recut this and adjust for the size of the plywood that I'm using. Now I have avoided this so long um, because Kerf just scared me. I didn't understand what it was. Um, I've tried to understand it for a long time. Well, this week I finally watched some videos and I think I have an understanding of it because I I actually had to know in order um, to be able to make some designs work this week. All right, so let's see if I can show you a five second version of what Kerf is with any laser that you're using. So let's say you're going to cut out a square on your laser and I'm using this thick marker for a reason. All right, so there's the square I'm gonna cut out. Well, whenever the laser starts to cut that square, it's actually going down, it's burning down in kind of in the middle of that line, okay? And I'm just kind of, I'm going past my square just to show you that the laser is, think of it as going in between the center of your line. Well, what it's burning that away, and what ends up happening is there's a little bit of space, there's, there's missing material basically, that's been burned away. So instead of this square, let's say this was a one inch square, instead of that actually being a one inch square when it's cut, it's gonna be a little bit smaller because the laser has burned away some of the material. So let me show you because I actually cut out, this is, this is what made me actually understand what Kerf was. Um, in someone's video, they, they showed this. This is what they did to figure out the curve of your machine. And I will say, even if you're using a Glowforge like me, you still need to check the curve of your machine because it can still be different. Not all, every laser has its own curve. So all you need to do is cut out a one inch square. So this was one inch when I designed it and then I cut it out. And now I'm gonna take my calipers and I'm just going to measure and see how much, basically how much material was burned away and how big is my square now? So now it is showing that it is 0.993. So let me write that down. 0.993. And remember I started out at one inch, so I'm just going to subtract those, all right? And it comes out to 0 0.007 is my difference and so that is the kerf of my machine so that's the number i need to remember so this little test with this little square is really what helped me to understand because i was like how in the world do i find out find out the kerf of my machine because i kept hearing people say you need to know the kerf of your machine but no one ever really explained how to do it so do this little one inch square test and get your kerf 
and then write this number down because this is what you need to remember and use anytime you are working with slots. Okay, so now that you understand Curf, now whatever project you're working on that has slots, you wanna cut the part out that does not contain the slot. So in this case, I cut out all of the little arms for my ornament holder, and I cut them all out from the same piece of wood. That's the key thing, it has to be the same piece of wood. I like to use up scrap, so I did find a scrap that I was able to cut all nine of these arms, but that way I only have to do this measuring and math one time. So I've got the arm here, and remember that kerf number that I figured out before? So I need to know that, so I've got that there. And a little bit of math, but it's not that painful. So on the, um, the file, there are the little slots, which I'll show you in a minute. And I'm gonna need to adjust the measurement for that. So to find out what they need to measure so that this part of the arm fits right in and snaps real good, I need to take my calipers again and I'm going to measure the width of this material. Because remember before I showed you, not all eighth inch birch plywood is created equally. All right, so this one is, let's see, can you see it? 0.132, so that's the number I'm gonna write down. 0.132, and I'm going to subtract my curve, which was 0.007. All right, and I do use calculator because these decimals are not my friend. So it is 0.125. Now I also need to measure this way and see what that side is gonna have to be of the slot. So that is 0.5, we'll say 0 0.534, right? 0 0.534 minus my curve. Let me cheat with my calculator, 0 0.527. All right, so these are the two numbers that I'm going to need in the Glowforge software. So let me show you how I'll adjust the file um, with these two numbers before I cut this. I'll be cutting this piece again but I'm going to have these slots so that they measure the right way and these arms fit in them. All right, in the Glowforge software, I've already uploaded the part that I'm going to cut. It's the strip with the three slots here. Now I need to access just the individual little slots, but when I click on it right now, it's all grouped together. So if you just right click, you can ungroup and now they're all separate. So I can click on each one of these separate and that's what I want. So a lot of times files come all grouped together, so you may need to ungroup. All right, so I'm gonna click on one of these little slots because that's what I need to adjust. So once I click on it, down here appears an align button and a little ruler, which is um, the resize tool. So here the scale, it's gonna show you the width of that slot and the height of the slot. And this here is the aspect ratio. Sometimes it's locked like that, that means it's locked, and um, then the software will, will automatically adjust your measurements um, and keep the same ratio. You wanna unlock that because you wanna be able to tell, tell it exactly the width and the exact height that you want that slot to be. So make sure that is unlocked. Those numbers that we just figured out a minute ago, that's what I'm going to plug in here. So I know the width of my slot needs to be 0.125, not 0.112. It's obvious there's a big difference there. And so my, um, my little, uh, what do you call them? The little hangers would not fit. So I'm just going to type in 0.125 and the height was 0.527, so that's not too different, 0.527. So now that has adjusted that slot to be the exact size that I measured and know that that little arm will fit in there. So I just need to do that to all of them so that they are all the same. And then I like to just go back and double check because I feel like I've had it sometimes where I thought they were all right and they're not. Um, okay, oh, see that one there, sometimes for whatever reason, it seems like sometimes it doesn't take the measurements. So let me check one more time, 0 0.125, 0 0.527. Okay, yes, now they're all the same. All right, so now I'm ready to cut. And then I, a lot of times I like to go ahead and group it back together. And then I need three of these, so I'm gonna copy and paste my three. 
Now you may want to just cut one first and make sure that um, their sizing is correct. So actually I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let me move these two over. Let me just cut one and make sure that I did all my measurements correctly. Okay, so I cut out my strip here and now the test. Let's see if my arms fit in the little slots. And I wanna hear like a little snap. All right, well, you probably can't hear that on camera, but the way you can tell if it really does fit good is it'll come and it'll, it'll be flush um, with the back side. So I just need to wiggle it down in there. It does fit, I have a nice tight fit. So my measurements were correct. So I'm just gonna pop the rest of them in here. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other strips uh, because I know that these fit. So hopefully that will save you a lot of headache dealing with the slots in, um, in any file, but um, help you know how to piece this together better. 